Calling this meeting to order. Mr. Clerk, please conduct the prayer and the flag salute. God of the universe, look thou with favor upon these here assembled, and bestow thy guidance upon the members of the governing body in their deliberations. This we ask in thy name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. I made a little mistake here. First thing I should have done is make an announcement. Notice of this meeting starting the date, place, and time has been decimated as required under the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975. In the event of an emergency, everybody knows the rear doors. Make sure you run, 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 and get out of here quickly. I'm only kidding. In case of an emergency, use the back doors, go straight down, and away from the building. If I'm talking too much and you get bored and you decide to snore out the door, outside, in the back. Hey, there you go, they like it. Okay, any member of the public wishing to speak during a public comment session at the end of the meeting to please sign in on the white sheets provided at the front of the room. Make sure you turn all your cell phones because I am collecting cell phones today. If your phone rings, it is mine and I will thank you for it. So please turn them off if you need to speak Go outside the doors and have your conversation. Mr. Clerk, can you please uh, call the roll? Mr. Calvis. Here. Mr. Byer. Mr. Byer is absent due to his father-in-law passing away. Uh, let's uh, hold him and his family in our prayers. Brown. Here. Brooks. Here. Cosby Hurling. Here. Sadowski. Here. Minichinko. Here. Yamakaitis. Here. Medina. Here. Hickey. Here. Mr. Alvarez. Here. Approving the minutes of December 16, 2014, January 6, 2015, and January 20th, 2015 regular meetings. Motion? Yes, Council President, I make a motion for the approval of the minutes. And I seek a second. Second. Mr. Calvis? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Medichinko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Abstain on December 16. Um, yes on all the others. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. We're going to start with some presentations. Uh, Mr. Brown? Uh, Mayor? Good evening, everybody. One of the advantages of uh, being in a town like Linden and having your family living here all your lives is that you develop relationships and you develop, develop friends. And uh, one of our friends um, uh, had an untimely passing 10 years ago. His name was uh, Joe Saliga. Uh, Joe Saliga um, not only became a state senator, he was a Democratic chairman in town, but it's, the story of Joe Saliga is, 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 is much deeper. Uh, Joe uh, ran for a seventh ward councilman back in the 80s. And at the time that he ran for council, my grandmother and grandfather were uh, Democratic committee people in town, already elected. They abandoned the Democratic Party and formed their own line with Joe, and Joe won his first election. Um, and the argument was very simple. Uh, Joe's father was friends with their children, and it was a, a no-brainer. He said, we, we support our friends. Uh, and it was through that that I got my first, uh, what I call, lesson of being independent in politics. You can think for yourself and you can uh, do what you feel is right. And as that's precisely what they did. And, and, and Joe had a very nice career in politics. Um, and he did a lot for a lot of people. And there are many people in this town who are still working as a result of, of him being involved in politics. So, um, 
And not only that, when I ran in my first successful campaign, uh, Joe uh, was my campaign manager, so I learned a lot. I, I, I used that template that was given to me by Joe for my first campaign, and I've used it ever since. I mean, I've modified it with a little bit of Facebook, and I've modified it with a little bit of social media, but uh, I still stick to that same template, and I'm very thankful and grateful to have uh, been involved uh, with, with Joe Saliga, and I probably wouldn't be standing here right now had I not taken a good lesson in politics from Joe Saliga. So um, tonight we are reading a resolution. Um, we are commemorating the 10th anniversary of the passing of Joe Saliga. And when I first started, I didn't need glasses. But now I need glasses. I was a young guy back then. The resolution reads as, as follows. Uh, um, Mayor, one minute. Yes. Oh. Mayor, can we have uh, Anne-Marie Saliga? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Anne-Marie, please come up. <laughs> so. Anne Marie remembers all those nights. Those 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 are rough rough nights, huh? <laughs> anyway, uh, Councilman Brown would like to say a few words as well. I'll be real quick. Um, I, I'm the one who requested this um, resolution because um, for many people, Joe touched a lot of people's lives. But for me, um, Joe has always been known as uh, sometimes they call me Little Saliga or uh, Peter Saliga. Joe was a father to me. Um, being chairman of the finance committee, a lot of people don't know the history. Is Joe's actually the one that brought me into the finance office with the city and taught me a lot of uh, how to handle finances in general. And um, to have his um, Anne Marie here, Anne Marie knows she's like a mother to me. Um, so to me, this is very special to me because they were the first group of people that actually brought uh, me into Linden and accepted me and, and taught me a lot. And uh, Joe was very hard on me when I made mistakes and. Uh, and um, he taught me a lot of things. And as Rezo is going to explain, he owned a business called Scoop, School, uh, Cool Scoop Italian Ice. A lot of people don't know that. For a while, he had me running that and uh, taught me a few lessons in business as well. So um, this is a man who touched many lives in Linden um, that has effects on Linden right now uh, to this day. But for me, he was always a father figure to me as well. So I think with that being said, Resolution reads, whereas Joseph S. Saliga Jr.'s commitment to serving the public began long before his first run for elective office when he put together community events to raise funds for those less fortunate than himself and whereas Joe S. Saliga Jr. then took his commitment to public service to the next level when he won a seat in 1977 on the Linden Board of Education at the age of 19, making him at the time the youngest person elected to the Board of Education. And whereas at the same time, his entrepreneurial spirit began to develop with the purchase of his first Italian ice truck, the revenue from which helped him pay for his college education and later led him to, to the founding of Cool Scoop Italian Ices, where he manufactured his own Italian ice, sold to other vendors, and leased Italian ice trucks, and whereas Joe S. Saliga Jr. also understood the value of an education receiving a BA in political science from Keene University, a master's in public administration also from Keene University, and a master's of science degree and industrial relations from Rutgers University, and whereas Joseph Saliga Jr. went on to prove himself a responsible leader by serving on the Linden City Council from 1984 to 1988, the Union County Board of, the Union County Board of Chosen Freeholders from 1988 to 1990, representing the 22nd Legislative District in the New Jersey State Assembly from 1994 to 2001, and the New Jersey State Senate from 2002 to 2003, and whereas during his time in the New Jersey State Legislature, he was a thoughtful and respected legislator, co-chairing the Senate Environmental Co Committee, serving as the second ranking Democrat on the State Appropriations Committee, and sponsoring legislation that improved the quality of life for those in the state of New Jersey. And whereas Joseph S. Saliga Jr.'s heart was always in his hometown of Linden, where he served as its, as, as its chief financial officer, the municipal treasurer, and with his keen financial ability, made it the envy of other towns. And whereas Joseph S. Saliga Jr., at the age of 47, was taken from us in a tragic car accident on February 18, 2005, and whereas Joseph S. Saliga Jr. most of all valued his family and friends, making each of them in his own way feel special and leaving us, his family, friends, and the community of Linden richer for having had a chance to call him our friend. And whereas, and whereas the mayor and council of the city of Linden do hereby wish to acknowledge the 10th anniversary of the passing of one of Linden's true leaders and keep him alive in our hearts 
by remembering him for the compassionate person he was. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the mayor and council of the city of Linden that they do hereby acknowledge the 10th anniversary of the tragic passing of a man who seized the opportunity to change the life for the people he cared for, his friends, his family, Linden, and the people of New Jersey, for the better, Joseph Saliga, Jr. It's always a great thing when we can honor one of our young people in our town. It, it probably gives us the best feeling that we could possibly have. We have a gentleman, um, Micah Jonathan Petit Holm. Um, and we're, we're, we're acknowledging his outstanding career in track. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to let my colleague, uh, Councilman Monty Brooks, acknowledge some, some, some individuals that are here in the audience tonight, uh, some great members uh, from our community who um, did some outstanding things in, in, in athletics in our town and really kind of put Linden on the map long before we had great basketball teams, we had these gentlemen. Um, Mr. Brooks, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There are a lot of comments. <clears throat> I hear it all the time about, you know, we're taking you know, a community to raise a child and you know, understanding how many people become involved in the lives of our students that you see in front of us here, the young man that we're about to present this award to, as well as myself. And this gives me an opportunity to talk about two individuals that are Linden graduates, Linden High School graduates from the city of Linden, spent all of their time in Linden, family still in Linden, and actually one lived around the corner from me and the other down the corner from me, both of which I learned how to play every sport that I know how to play from the gentleman that I'm about to talk about now. One is Mr. John Charles. Please stand. <clears throat> Mr. John Charles is a first Linden High School graduate, first round draft choice of the New England Patriots. Also, okay, no, 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 come on. Graduate of Purdue University. Okay. What else happens here? <laughs> All good stuff. Okay. Purdue University, great athlete there. Linden grad, did all of his work for Linden, and one of the great guys that I know, Mr. John Charles. <laughs> Seated next to him, Mr. John Moon. Also, Linden, Linden High School grad, lived down the corner from me. World-renowned coach, Mr. Moon, coach at uh, Seton Hall University. Also, Mr. Moon, I don't think I'm giving this away when I say that Mr. Moon has been appointed. He is the coach for the U.S. Olympic team Pan Am Games in Montreal. Head coach. John Moon, Linden High School graduate. In front, we have Mr. Walter Martin, also Linden grad, 30 plus years service to the city of Linden. Also, 
a member of the Linden Hall of Fame. Jonathan Michael Petty Holmes, when you stand forward, please understand that there are people who will always help you, like the mayor, myself, and people who are in the background. Those people in the background are now seated before you. Please come forward. Also, may I have come forward Coach Simon Hodnett, coach of the LIU Blackbirds, Jonathan Pettit Holmes' coach, and a man who took him from number 24 in the nation in the 400 hurdles to number 12. Number 12 in the nation, Jonathan Pettit Holmes. Resolution recognizing Micah Jonathan Pettit Holmes for his outstanding track career. And although I like to say that, Micah Jonathan Pettit Holmes, as you guys know, was also an IB student. That means he was an international baccalaureate student. That also means that when Jonathan Pettit Holmes entered LIU University, Brooklyn, he entered with six college credits already completed, serviced at Linden High School. Whereas Michael Jonathan Pettit Holmes, a native of Port au Prince, Haiti, settled in Linden, attending Linden High School and graduating in 2012, and whereas during his senior year at Linden High School, Michael Jonathan Pettit Holmes distinguished himself by earning first team all state track and field honors in the 400 meter hurdles. And whereas he went on to attend Long Island University, Brooklyn on a track scholarship and is entering his junior year there. And whereas in college, JoJo, as his teammates call him, has continued to excel in track, being recognized as one of the top 400 hurdlers in the country. And whereas upon Michael Jonathan Pettit Holmes' college accomplishments, our 2013-2014 second team All-American, 400 hurdles, four-time NEC 600-meter relay champion, two-time NEC 500-meter champion, 2013-2014, second place 400-meter hurdles, 2014 pen relays, and many others, too numerous to mention. Whereas the Mayor and Council of the City of Linden wish to congratulate Micah Jonathan Petty Holmes on his outstanding accomplishments and thank him for bringing for being outst outstanding recognition to the city of Linden. Now therefore be it resolved by the mayor and the council of the city of Linden that they hereby recognize Micah Jonathan Pettit Holmes for his many outstanding accomplishments in track and field and wish to express their gratitude for his exceptional representation of the city of Linden and his residents and be it therefore resolved that a copy of this resolution be appropriately present, presented to Micah Jonathan Pettit Holmes and be placed in the minutes of the city council of the city of Linden in permanent acknowledgement of his accomplishments. Good, good evening, everyone. Um, I won't be saying much, but I just wanted to thank everyone for the prayers and the constant support that you guys have given me. Um, I want to thank the board and the councilmen. I want to thank the mayor. I want to thank my coach, Chiz, um, Mr. Brooks especially for being my academic advisor in high school and also my coach. I want to thank Mr. Martin and his family for being there when my parents passed away. I want to be. Um, I want to thank also my family, my aunt, my cousins, my little nephews, and my teammates for being there for me um, at this moment. And thank you all. That's about it. First of all, I'd like to thank you guys for allowing us to be here. Thank you to the city of Linden for uh, blessing this young man with uh, the accomplishments that he's done and for continuously supporting him. Thank you to the board for acknowledging his accomplishment and for continuously supporting him as well. Thank you.
Next, we're going to be recognizing um, Colleen Grayson as a good citizen of Linden. And if, uh, is she here? Will you come up? Come on up, Colleen. If anybody ever goes by the PAL building, you'll see, you'll see nice shrubs along the building. Um, and she, and uh, the, the nice colored um, uh, mulch, uh, very decorated. And you would think that the city had done that, but it wasn't the city. It was, it was, it was Colleen. Um, I'm going to tell a little story. I, I drove by the park a couple of weeks ago, and I, I see all these leaves being raked up, and I'm like, who authorized the overtime for this? I'm thinking financially, right? And I look over there, and it's, it's Colleen. Colleen's cleaning the park, and, uh, and this, is, this is just being a good citizen. I mean, uh, and, and Peter and myself, we just were constantly talking about her worth to our community and how she's always just doing extra, and we were trying to figure out a way that we could recognize her, and we, we came up with the idea of um, doing a resolution to honor her uh, because uh, we really appreciate what she's doing. I mean, we don't have many citizens who do this. I mean, you are very rare. And uh, we, 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 we're very thankful. Uh, and keep up the good work. <laughs> okay. right. So, Peter, I'm going to let you read the resolution. I, I should read this. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Huh? Read this one. Go ahead. One of y'all read it. Come on, now. Come on, Peter. <laughs> I'm shy when it comes to reading. Okay. The resolution reads, this is a resolution recognizing the efforts of Colleen Grayson as a good citizen. Whereas Albert Schweitzer once said, even if, even, if, even, it's, even if it's a little thing to do, do something for those who have need of a man's help, something for which you get no pay but the privilege of doing it. Remember, you don't live in a world all your own. Your brothers are here too. And whereas many of our fellow citizens have adopted this philosophy, doing things not for recognition, but as a statement about the type of community they want to live in. And whereas Colleen Grayson, a resident of Linden, has quietly taken on the role of making her neighbor and the city of Linden a better place for residents, and whereas Colleen Grayson, a resident of East Blanky Street, has made improvements to her neighborhood by cleaning up nearby Dobson Park and the PL property each morning and evening, and whereas she has unselfishly spent her own money to beautify the Powell building by purchasing and planting shrubs and flowers to make Linden, Linden a better place. Whereas the mayor and council of the city of Linden wish to express their heartfelt appreciation to Colleen Grayson for all her efforts. Now therefore it be resolved by the mayor and council of the city of Linden that they hereby thank Colleen Grayson for her unsolicited efforts that were done by her for no other reason than the privilege of doing it and, and, and expressing their gratitude and efforts to make Linden a better place. And be it further resolved that this resolution be entered into the minutes of the Council of the City of Linden, and that a copy be presented to Colleen Grayson in permanent recognition of the foregoing. Well, thank you so much. I'd really like to thank my family for putting up with me <laughs> and my husband allowing me to spend the money that I did. Um, the only, you would always find me at the park, <laughs> but I, I love being out there and I enjoy all the people that I meet, so many people, and um, I've come to know uh, a great deal of my neighbors on my street that I never knew before and um, then another street, and it's wonderful. It, it's for everybody that I've met, you know, it's, um, even just the words that they say to me really touch my heart. But um, thank you very much. Thank you. say last but certainly not least okay 
I, I have to acknowledge our Linden High School cheerleaders. That's right. Um, of which many I've known for a very long time. Uh, my daughter has cheered uh, through the Pop Warner program right through high school, and she che cheers for a competitive squad. And some of the other girls here are also high school cheerleaders and on a competitive squad. But uh, I've had the privilege of being with these young ladies for a very long time. And uh, I became known as like, because I didn't have any sons who played football, I had to bring my daughter to cheer practice. And I became known as like the cheer dad, you know what I mean? And, and, we, and, and we even developed our own little cheer. I mean, and, and John Moon, he, he knows this cheer. These guys, know, it, it, we, say, we say rah, 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 sis, boom, bah, hit him in the head with a stick. And, that, and, that, and that, was our, that was our cheer every time they would go into competition because I, I couldn't say, you know, I couldn't be like a, have a dainty cheer. I had to have a manly cheer. So that was, that, was, that was my cheer that I gave to them every time they went up to competition. But um, if anybody knows anything about our Pop Warner football program, our Pop Warner football program is funded by the cheerleaders. Okay, no, Central Jersey and Northern Jersey, they have cheer competitions, and the, cheer, the money raised from the cheer competitions is used to fund the actual league activity. So basically, without the cheerleaders, there would be no football. It's very simple. So, um, so we feel that the boys went out and they won a championship, and that was a tremendous thing. And let me tell you something, those guys, they worked hard. But we, we do not forget that you girls were out there every game cheering them on, and many of you have cheered some of this, and the, and the coaches as well. And the, oh, in the cold, in the cold. But um, many of you girls have been with some of these same fellas who played in this, on the senior football team uh, since uh, Pop Warner days. And um, we really appreciate you being out there. Uh, we really appreciate, appreciate you guys cheering them on. So without any further ado, we would like to present you all with a resolution um, acknowledging your efforts. Uh, am, am I going to read this, Mr. Brown? Okay. I just followed it. Okay. Okay. This is a resolution recognizing the Linden Tigers cheer squad. It says, whereas the Linden Tigers cheer squad has been an integral and active part of the Linden High School's extracurricular program, providing encouragement and enthusiasm to various teams and their members, and whereas the 20-member cheer squad was coached by head coach Genevieve Superior and assistant coach Gina DeVito, who are commended for doing an exceptional job with these student athletes. And whereas these student athletes put tremendous effort into the development of their skills with their precision and coordination as a team and put their skills and school on display for all to observe. And whereas the Linden High School cheer squad participated in the Linden's annual Halloween parade, the Linden High School Varsity Football State Championship Parade, as well as attending every Linden High School football game to cheer their team on. And whereas the Linden High School cheer squad raises money for the Linden High School Amber Scholarship Fund in honor of the memory of Linden High School cheerleader Amber Duncan Wilson, and whereas the mayor and city council of the city of Linden wish to congratulate the team members, Brianna Armstead, Deja Marshall, Jayla Mickens, Sh Sh Shanna Finley, okay, Shania, Shania Finley, Mia Height, Haley Miller, Sharon Mills, Alexis Slayton, okay, <laughs> Tanaya Swenson, Amina Abdul Wali, Nyla Hayes, Anaya Finney, Ayana Finney, Sianna Martin, Jada McCall, Kira Orman, Camille Wallace, An Anaya Peterson, Aliyah Johnson, I'm going to get this one wrong, Am Amaji, <laughs> did I get it right? Amaji Nesmith Nes and Taylor Bauer, and to recognize the honor and prestige they have brought to the city of Linden. And now, therefore, it be resolved that a copy of this resolution be entered into the minutes of the Council of the City of Linden and that copies be presented to the members of the team and the coaching staff in permanent recognition of their achievement. Congratulations, girls. Okay, you, you, you girls can come up, we'll give you your, your awards.
gonna take a picture too. So. Yay! Jim, would you like to say a few words? Okay, um, I would like to, first of all, thank both of you and everybody up here for allowing us girls to attend and awarding us with these resolutions. I'm very grateful for it. I would also like to thank you for not letting me know that I had to do a speech. <laughs> the girls know I get very nervous when I have to do a speech and I don't know. Um, but I would like to say, um, these girls, they work very hard. Um, most of the girls on here are seniors. Um, I've been with them. I've been with them since they've been freshmen, and um, they're graduating, and <laughs> it's upsetting. But I'm proud, and they're gonna be going on to bigger, better places, and I know that they're gonna do very well because they strive and they do everything that they can, um, whether it's academic, whether it's cheerleading, anything. Um, I'm very proud of all of you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, before we continue, ladies, there's school tomorrow. Do you want to be excused? And uh, being here does not mean you use this as an excuse not to do your homework tonight. All right. Thank you for coming, and congratulations. Also, to everybody, we were supposed to have the uh, football team here. It was unable to uh, get it done, I believe it was because of the weather. But we will be honoring the football team next month for anybody who's leaving now and wants to come back next month. Okay. Football team next month. Okay, at this time is the date and time established for the public hearing for ordinances on hearing. Ordinance 59-01. Has the ordinance, the ordinance oh, sorry. An ordinance 
to amend and supplement Chapter 2, Administration, Article 8, Policies and Procedures, Section 2-69.7, Recreation Fees shall be amended as follows. Delete Section 2-69.7, Recreation Fees in its entirety. Add Section 2-69.7, Recreation Fees as follows. Any activity or use of a facility shall be charged a fee of not less than $1, not and not more than $500. The specific per event or rental fee shall be determined by the Director of Public Property and Community Services in accordance with this section. Said fee shall be inclusive of any state sales tax applicable in accordance with state law. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Has any written communication been received? No, sir. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Okay. Uh, recognize members of the public. Okay. After all public speaks, we pass the motion. Please to close the hearing. We need a motion for this ordinance. I ask for a motion of Ordinance 59-01 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Kalbus. Yes. Brown. Uh, Brooks. Yes. Cosby Herling. Yes. Thank you. Sadowski. Yes. Minichinko. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Alvarez. Yes. Ordinance 59-02. An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 7, Traffic, shall be amended as follows. 7-33, Handicap Parking Regulation. 7-33.1A, Handicap Parking on Street. At 1162 East Henry Street, one space. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Has any written communication been received? No, sir. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Then I ask for a motion, please. Council President, I move that the hearing be closed and Ordinance 59-2 be adopted and request a second. Second. Mr. Kalbus? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Minichinko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Motion 59-03. An ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled, an ordinance establishing a schedule of titles, salary ranges, and regulations for maintaining the classification and salary standardization plan of all city employee of all employees of the City of Linden passed August 15, 1995 and approved August 16, 1995. Add 4JJ1, clerk driver, minimum salary a dollar, maximum salary a dollar. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Has any written communication been received? No, sir. Is there anyone that wish to be heard on this ordinance? May I have a motion, please? Mr. President, I ask the hearing be closed and ordinance 59-03 be adopted, and I seek a second. Second. Mr. Kalbus? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Minichinko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? No. Hickey? No. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ordinance 59-04. An ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled, an ordinance establishing a schedule of title, salary ranges, and regulations for maintaining the classification and salary standardization plan of all employees of the City of Linden passed August 15, 1995 and approved August 16, 1995 as follows. Add Schedule 4-JJ-2. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. <coughs> Excuse me. Has any written communication been received? No, sir. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard on this ordinance? Oh, this is going nice and quick. Can I have a motion, please? Mr. President, I ask the hearing be closed and ordinance 59-04 be adopted and seek a second. Second. Mr. Kalbus. Yes. Brown. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Minichinko. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Yes. All items listed with asterisks are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. 
There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member or citizen so request, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered on its normal sequence on the agenda. Items one through five. Does anyone wish to remove any item? In that case, uh, can I have a motion, please? Mr. President, I ask that consent agenda items number one through five be passed and seek a second. Second. Mr. Colbus? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby Harling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Medichinko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. At this time, we're going to committee reports on comments from the members of the governing body. Let's start with uh, Mr. Calvis. Thank you, Council President. From the License Inspector's Office, the City Clerk's License Division is submitting this monthly report for the month of January 2015. This office issued 12 dog licenses, 52 miscellaneous licenses, and collected $7,231. From the Personnel Committee report, number one, in the Law Department, the acceptance of John Hudak, Municipal Attorney, resignation effective February 5th, 2015, approval is requested to pay Mr. Hudak for all his unused accumulated 2015 time. Number two, the Department of Public Property and Community Services, the acceptance and approval for seasonal workers, list on, the list is on file in the Treasurer's Office. Number three, in the Division of Public Works, the acceptance and approval for seasonal workers, the list is on file in the Treasurer's Office. Number four, the Clean Communities Pro in the Clean Communities Program, the acceptance and approval for seasonal workers, the list is on file in the Treasurer's Office. Number five, the approval of the following FMLA, NJFLA leaves, employee number 001017, intermittent pay, FMLA and JFLA from January 29, 2015 to July 29, 2015. Employee number 000790 paid FMLA and JFLA from January 1, 2015 to April 1, 2015. Employee number 100327 paid intermittent FMLA and JFLA from January 1, 2015 to December 31st, 2015. Employee number 108165 paid FMLA and JFLA from February 3rd, 2015 to March 17th, 2015. And number six, amending the effective date of the intergovernmental transfer for Damien Johnson from January 20th, 2015 to February 17th, 2015 at the direction of New Jersey Civil Service Commission. I seek approval of said items and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Calvin. Yes. Brown. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Because Cosby Harling. I vote yes on all with the exception of number two. Sadowski. Yes. Minichinko. Oh. Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Thank you. Any first word resident who needs to get in contact with me, I can be reached via telephone 908-925-5568 or email ccalbus at linden-nj.org. This concludes my report, Council President. I think there is a question from the audience. Yes. I just like to know um, for number one, what is the unused accumulated time? What does this mean? Like the dollar amount, or well, let's just the time or the dollar amount, whatever. The requirements of civil service and the Division of Pension Benefits required part-timers to get a certain amount of time depending on their hours. Um, that being the case, 
we um, prorate the time in, in, the, in the years that they retire so or leave. So in this particular case, Mr. Hudak left the middle of the, you know, the end of January. So he got prorated, um, uh, I believe it's one vacation day, one personal day, or half oh, a so personal day. So it's vacation time that's, yeah, it's, okay. It's, it's, it's not sick, we don't pay All right, sick. fine. This concludes my report, Council President. Thank you, Mr. Colibus. Uh We do not have Mr. Bayer here. Uh, Mr. Sodaska will be uh, telling his report later on. Uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, okay. Approval is requested for the following finance actions. The payment of bills totaling $1,540,198.06. The bills have been signed by the mayor, council president, and finance chairman, and detailed check register and vouchers are on file in the clerk's office. I move for approval and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colbus? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Crosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Medichinko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. End of report. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Monty? Thank you, Council President. The report is from the Department of Public Property and Community Services, submitted by Traffic Maintenance Supervisor Tyrone L. Givens. I hereby submit the monthly financial report for the Division of Transportation and Parking. This report includes a collection of Orange Street parking meters, railroad parking lots, railroad parking permits, and merchant parking permits for the month of January 2015. New York side collections, $5,687. Trenton side collections, $5,384. Credit card transportation, $17,641.20. Parking meter collections, $12,081.70. Railroad permits, $8,932.22. Merchant permits $4,708 and no cents for a grand total of $54,408 and 12 cents. I move the approval for the. Uh, that doesn't need to be voted on. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Ms. Cosby. Thank you, Council President. Good evening to those of you who are left in the, the chamber. I want to just give some information from the Fifth Ward. Just as a reminder, we are doing a traffic study on Alexander Avenue from Dill Avenue to St. George's Avenue as there's a, a concern about truck traffic and the speeding from the car dealership. So if you have noticed the blank black box, it's still recording, but it's just not lit up. So if you saw that on the corner, that's what it's doing. There's also another issue on Dill Avenue near School Ford's vicinity on Garfield. There have been several accidents recently and I've also requested to have a traffic study done in that area as well. It's the same issue that we have in Orchard Terrace with Councilman Medina. It's a through fair. People think that it's a speedway and until we can actually get our speed humps, which were budgeted for this year, engineering, then you know we're gonna ask people just to be mindful that it's a school area, lots of pedestrians, and to please slow down. I wanted to thank my neighbors who are working with the sanitation department on the new tr trash collection. And with the number of holidays that we've had recently, still follow the schedule. I know that there was a question about trash today, but it's really being picked up tomorrow because of the holiday. Just be mindful of your calendar that was sent to you. And thank you for reading my emails because there were a couple of streets that I missed in our ward when I tried to give out which fifth ward or eighth, I'm sorry, district you're in. So thank you to the neighbors for doing that and also for letting me know that the streets were missed. We have our annual celebration of black history. It's gonna happen next Thursday at the London Multipurpose Center at seven o'clock PM. And we are honoring, we have the resolutions tonight. And join me that night when presenting them to Mr. Donald Given Sr. and Ms. Loretta Jones. They are two senior citizens here in our neighborhood. And I'm going to say that they are unsung because, you know, we want to acknowledge people who are famous or who've done this or who've done that. And this year we're acknowledging our senior neighbors who've contributed 
to the community in their own way, and we want to celebrate them on February 26th at 7 o'clock p.m. at the LMPC. I had something else, but I forgot. Oh, from the public, huh? Oh. From the Public Works Committee, we have the crews, they've been out, they've been trying to clean the streets, but we also have an, an issue with snow removal. So we've asked the management to come back to our committee with a plan that wouldn't, of course, need to be blessed by the committee. When you have snow, and it was on Wood Avenue, I don't know if, it, if you all have seen this, you couldn't get to the parking meter, so I know the mayor had issued a directive not to give tickets. If you can't pay the meter, how then would you give someone a ticket if they can't get over the humps? So what we're trying to look at is getting back to where we used to be in parts of town where there was not just snow plowing, but snow removal to make the streets safer and more passable. So that's something that we're looking into, and I just wanted to let everyone know that. What else do I have? That's pretty much all I have for the board, but I wanted to say happy birthday to Peter from this month, and happy birthday to Nancy and Treasury, and happy birthday to my friend, Freeholder Chris, and happy birthday to me, because my birthday is next week too. <laughs> and we're gonna be um, in my ward. You guys are welcome just to come by and pass and say happy birthday and just come, we'll be at the Luna, which is a, a little place in the fifth ward, 1900 block of St. George's Avenue. And that concludes my report. Ma'am, you have a question? the snow removal, they're designated areas, and there used to be a plan, so of course they have to give us what their new plan would be, and we'll evaluate that plan, but it wouldn't just be Wood Avenue. You, you have to consider where the children are crossing and the crosswalks, where the crossing guards are standing. Things that we've seen over the past couple of snow events that were not safe. You have to come to the mic though. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? The reason I'm bringing this up is because I have an 86-year-old neighbor who is out there plowing her driveway, and she keeps on getting plowed in after the plows have gone by. And she's out there again, trying to get her own car out because they just pile up the snow. I'm hiring kids. She's not. She's going to have a heart attack out there. But I've, I've, no, I've noticed uh, that you had a small plow going right over here on um, Helen Street, and he was um, going in and out of the cars. I think if everybody could put their cars into their driveways, if they've got a driveway, even if you have a two-family house, everybody should try and get into the driveway. So they just would plow out, you know, they would do their cleaning of their sidewalks and their driveway, and then not get all that heavy, hard, icy snow put right into your apron again. That's all. I agree. And since I still have the mic, I wanted to just, I have a new telephone number. And I noticed that a lot of people are not leaving the, a message. It's an internet phone, and I'm using 908-718-7933 because in the event that I cannot pick up, it's a Google Voice phone, and then I can just read the message through the email, of course. Everybody has email on their phone. So if you're calling and you want me to call you, please leave a message, and I'll be able to read the message or announce your name, so then if I can pick up, I will. So to reach me by phone, my number is 908-718-7933, and the email is the same, rcosbyherling at linden-nj.org. Sorry. Thank you, Ms. Cosby. Mr. Sadowski, you uh, have three minutes. I'll cut it down to two. Okay, <laughs> first, I just want to wish you happy birthday. Okay. Um, I have a report from the engineering department. Uh, let me read it out, even though I'm not uh, in charge. Uh, this is from the engineering report, February 17th, and so on. The Federal Emergency Management Agency has forwarded revised preliminary flood insurance rate maps 
these maps raise the 100-year flood zones by approximately four feet in tidal areas of Linden. Residential areas that never were in the flood areas, such as Lower Road, Buchanan Street, Federer Avenue, Walter Street, Mopsick Avenue, Edie Avenue, Winans Avenue, South Wood Avenue, West 11th Street, West 12th Street, East 16th Street, East 17th Street, East 18th Street, East 19th Street, East 12th Street, East 13th Street, and East 14th Street and Emma Place are now shown as flood zones. In addition, larger areas of Clinton Street, Madison Street, Parkway Avenue, Main Street, Arthur Street, and Irene Street are now in a flood zone. The preliminary maps are expected to take six to 12 months to be made final. Uh, if you have any questions concerning this on the maps regarding your property, to get the expert answer, please contact the city engineer. And the number is 474-8470. That's the city engineer, 474-8470. This affects a lot more people. So please, to find out, please give him a call or the uh, engineer department a call. Okay, now the report, uh, excuse me, uh, for the sixth ward, very short. Um, we still have the oil trains coming in and backing up by Smith Street and so on. Uh, we have, I don't know if you know, um, Mrs. Anne Marie Vasquez lives right there. Her backyard is 50 feet from, a, from the, one of the cars. She calls up them constantly. And she has to say that the last week, whether it's coincidence or just whatever it is, the trains have been coming in earlier, not in the middle of the night, one o'clock or two o'clock. She's hoping that this keeps up. I mean, she's in contact <laughs> with the rail company every other night, she calls them. So we're hoping that maybe this is something new that's coming up. Um, as mentioned before, with the snow, please help your neighbors. Uh, I know it's a pain, uh, you shovel out and then a plow comes through, but if there's someone who needs help, please go out and give them a hand. If you have a snow blower or not, you know, do it yourself for someone. Um, let me see what else. Uh, on, <laughs> on 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th Street and Clinton Avenue, the water company is putting in new water lines, um, which means the street is being dug up. There has been a problem with parking. Uh, they put up signs that the city didn't want them to about parking. Finally, the city put up uh, different signs. Uh, there is, on those streets, there's no parking from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, it is supposed to end on the 20th, which is a couple of days from now. But at the beginning, it was up to the oh, beginning of March, so they are trying to help the people out. The people have a tough time up there with the parking, and now with the snow too. So please hang in. The city's trying the best. Um, uh, as I said before, please watch with the, I live on a corner. Uh, Watch the ice when people are driving. You could be shoveling your snow when a car comes around a truck, the next thing you know, like we had there, cars ended up on the sidewalk. Please, please be careful. Uh, this concludes my report. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Sadowski. Michael. Thank you, Mr. President. From the Construction Code Department, the Construction Code Office had issued 112 permits and 18 certificates for the month of January 2015. We have collected $133,420 in fees for the month and have turned it over to the Treasurer's Office. Uh, just to touch on I, I, what Mr. Sadowski was saying about the pipe work, I mentioned last month that I was going to attend a pre-construction meeting and uh, start, the starting date was technically supposed to be April 1st, so, but Montana Construction has started early to replace existing water mains and construct new water mains on 10th Street from Winans Avenue to Woodlawn Avenue 
11th Street from Mopsic Avenue to Woodlawn Avenue, 12th Street from Winans Avenue to Woodlawn Avenue, West 15th Street from Stiles Street to Wood Avenue, and 16th Street from Stiles Street to Clinton Street. I also, you know, I've been getting many calls about the park, and we know it is a problem. They are going to try to work with us as much as possible. The project consists of uh, replacing 10,000 linear feet of new 80 mains, and there's going to be 272 new services done to the houses and uh, 15 hydrants. Uh, I know parking is, is an inconvenience for everyone, but I was told it should only be left on the streets. The, the pipe works. Each street should only take like two to three days and, and should be back to normal. Uh, normal working hours will be from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, and the residents and businesses will be notified prior to construction with letters and by Montana's personnel when the services will be transferred. So when they're going to shut your water off, they're going to let you know. Uh, the, the completion date, excluding paving and final reservoir station, is approximately July 31st. But since they actually started a month early, hopefully, hopefully they'll, they'll get done at an early date with the weather permitting. Uh, with that said, that concludes my report, okay. Mr. President. Uh, uh, thank you, Michael. Mr. Sadowski, okay, you have just, another just minute? Just to add on to that, uh, some of the problems we had at the beginning was, first of all, the water company did not send any letters out at the beginning. People woke up, and next thing you know, there were signs. Uh, like Mr. Uh, Council Manichego said, they sent out the letters now. But at the beginning, no notification was sent which was a surprise to the people. That's why we had a lot of problems at the beginning. Thank you. That was an extra minute, Mr. Sadowski. We'll take it away from next month. Uh, one less minute next month for you. Whatever you want. OK. <laughs> Michelle, do you have a report for us? Thank you, Council President. Uh, from the Fire Committee, the Fire Prevention Bureau collected a total of $2,968.50 for the month of January 2015. From the health department, uh, once again, the low-cost mobile spay neuter van and clinic will be visiting Linden on Tuesday, March 10th. This time, the van will be parked near the City Hall garage on Knopf Street. Services offered will once again include the low-cost spay and neutering of animals, microchipping of animals, and low-cost wellness services. Further information can be obtained by contacting the Associated Humane Societies at 973 824-7080, extension 118. Appointments must be made for the spaying and neutering in advance. It was very successful the last time. This is part of our contract with uh, Associated Humane to offer this to our residents. Uh, as many are talking about the traffic studies, uh, we also had a traffic study being done on uh, Chandler and Dill Avenue and uh, Cranford and Dilley Avenue uh, to see if the feasibility of possibly putting four-way stops there. I've been getting complaints about people speeding. This is a route for school four with kids crossing with the crossing guard. So just like to say, please slow down, okay? We will get the results of those studies. And I also met with Councilman Armstead to bring him up to uh, speed on what's going on with the truck traffic over in uh, the Eighth Ward uh, from some of the side streets, we're having a major problem with trucks accessing a warehouse in the neighborhood coming down some of our side streets, damaging trees and stuff. So we will uh, be sitting with traffic to come up with a plan to address that as well. Uh, I would like to extend my condolences to the family of our former Sixth Ward Councilman, Charlie Crane, who passed away on January 23rd. Councilman Crane served the city of Linden and the residents of the Sixth Ward for many years until retiring several years ago. The Eighth Ward will also be having their annual egg hunt on Saturday, March 28th at 11 a.m. sharp at Mikowski Park. Um, rain date will be on Saturday, April 4th. More information will follow. And I was also asked to announce that the Friends of Linden Animal Shelter, FOLUS, We'll be having uh, the Folis Applebee's Flapjack Fundraiser, Spring 2015, on Saturday, March 14th, from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. at Applebee's in Linden. Tickets are $12 per person. Please call 908-463-0050 for more information. Uh, please come and support this worthwhile cause. Folis is still helping uh, with helping to try find homes for our homeless animals. 
with our agreement with uh, Associated Humane in Newark. Uh, this is a volunteer nonprofit organization and they need funds to run this. So we ask for your support to come out for that. Um, that concludes my report, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Mr. Medina. Uh, yes, thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. Um, just a couple, I have a short report, but I have a couple things that I want to uh, just acknowledge from the Ninth Ward. I've been getting a lot of calls, um, uh, especially when it comes to a reference to pajos. So I just want to let the people know I'm, I'm aware of all the pajos. There's pajos throughout the city, everywhere. I can imagine in New Jersey due to all the snow and whatnot, um, especially concerning um, Raritan and DeWitt. Um, I know that end looks pretty bad. I actually spoke to our city engineers. I know that this year they're going to pave between Livingston and Hillside. I spoke, try to get that, try to get that reversed. But as per our, our city engineer, the way the grant money, uh, the grant was actually written, it, it was written to where it needed to start on St. George and it has to go all the way down and they just can't s just stop it and start it at the opposite, at the other end. Uh, again, I wasn't around when that, when that deal was made, but uh, they have to go in one direction. They just can't leave a gap for some odd reason. But I asked DPW to please get out there as soon as possible, uh, put in some cold patch. Obviously, everyone knows that cold patch does not last. As soon as another plow truck comes around, it just rips it right out. So we'll, we'll try to stay on top of that. And, and as soon as it gets warmer, they'll, they'll go out there with the hot box and the good stuff, and they'll, and they'll do some real patching. And hopefully, by 2016, maybe, uh, the rest of the WIT will be completed. Um, but I just wanted to acknowledge that we have potholes everywhere, um, but we're working on it. Also, I also want to thank uh, some of the folks that, uh, that live along DeWitt Terrace. Uh, doing this job, you rarely get compliments, but uh, the people on DeWitt Terrace are a lot happier now. Um, the speed and the traffic flow has definitely improved on DeWitt Terrace, um, especially for the parents dropping off their children at McManus. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of good feedback. In the beginning, it was rough. Uh, it was a change, um, but we're hoping to have that, to have the last stop sign on Fernwood and DeWitt hopefully installed by the end of this month or not beginning of March. I know the uh, traffic bureau are uh, a little bit tied up at the moment and they're doing other projects, but we're, 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 by the springtime it should be all done uh, when it comes to DeWitt and Orchard Terrace. But I just want to thank those folks, so those positive phone calls, and I like to hear positive news from the community that something uh, that was changed is actually uh, providing uh, or excuse me improving their quality of life so that was the end goal there to improve the quality of life uh, for these people on DeWitt Terrace and, and the children as well. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Cosby Hurling mentioned earlier the speed humps I spoke to the traffic department uh, we're going to re-evaluate the speed humps after all the stop signs are installed um, we think the speed humps might be an overkill for DeWitt and Orchard because of the, just the overall change on, 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 on DeWitt Terrace. So we're going to do another traffic study um, to determine if that's actually going to happen on DeWitt and Orchard. So that'll be more speed humps for you, Councilwoman. So, um, other than that, when it comes to snow removal, I have a bunch of kids from the Ninth Ward. So if you need some kids, they are for hire. Give me a call, 908-986-6100. And I also encourage everyone to work together, work with your neighbors. One of the things that I do, um, as soon as I got my snowblower a couple years ago, I just go down two blocks and come right back up two blocks. I do it because it's fun, believe it or not. I love playing with my snowblower. Um, <laughs> and I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't want to jinx it or anything like that, but uh, I love going up and down, I love helping neighbors, and you know, when they get out uh, to that front step and they look that, hey, the major work was done, it's kind of, I feel good about it. So try to help out your neighbors, especially your senior citizens, uh, the one who needs it the most. Um, besides that, Again, if you need to get in contact with me, 908-986-6100. You can email me, amedina at linden-nj.org. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Medina. Ms. Hickey? Good evening, everyone. Um, first, I would just like to say um, I want to thank the 10th Ward residents. My, my initial snowstorms into my uh, councilwomanship. Uh, everyone really did a wonderful job. We 
we really let it out on social media. It seemed that everyone worked so hard and put their cars in their driveways and just so many little things meant a lot. And I did drive around our ward many, many, many times because I wanted to see what was wrong, what was going on. But for the most part, when we were expecting that huge storm that never happened, um, everything was, worked out pretty well. You know, and we all work together. I do too I have some uh, young children, young teenagers who are for hire. And uh, I haven't had any complaints. I have many calls for them, so everything has been good with that. As Councilman Medina also stated, I feel like just taking his report and say, yeah, 10th Ward on. Uh, our, I know there's a lot of uh, potholes in our wards as well. I know Academy is horrible. Uh, like he said, we can fill in these potholes. They're just going to pop right out. After driving around the rest of the city, I have to say, though, our ward isn't as bad as others. Because uh, it's funny how you notice these things now, more so now that you're on council. Um, as far as my committees go, many of you know I'm on negotiations, and I've been starting to meet with the attorneys in our committee, so we are moving forward with that. And also our uh, Revenue Enhancement Committee, which is a committee I'm very excited about. I'm looking forward to um, inviting other organizations and committees to join us with the Revenue Committee, because I think it's important that we all start working together and so everyone is on the same page so we accomplish more. Everybody's on a different page. We're not going to accomplish the things we need with all these new projects going up in our city. Uh, people who have attended Casino Night for the Linden Housing Authority, another fabulous night. I can't thank you enough who are coming. If you didn't come this year, I hope to see you next year. Everyone had a great time, and, and we raised a little bit of money for our, our seniors and our disabled residents who live in Linden. Um, I want to send out my uh, condolences to the Crane family and also to Councilman Beyer uh, for the loss of his, uh, his father-in-law. And just two reminders that I have, well, one uh, ninth, I've spoken to Councilman Medina shortly within the next month or two. We're going to start having combination meetings where the ninth and the 10th ward will have a joint meeting um, so we can all come together. And again, we're on the same page. One month we'll have it in his ward, one month we'll have it in our ward, um, and we'll have guest speakers and different things just to keep the community informed. And lastly, um, two, just two announcements. This Saturday at Applebee's, uh, the ROTC, which is a great group of kids who are always volunteering and helping in our community, looking for service hours, are having a breakfast from 8 to 10 a.m. If you can go out there and help them, it would be so greatly appreciated. And like I said, there are a bunch of kids who, who really do appreciate it. And also on Wednesday, February 25th, the Ladies Auxiliary will be have an efficient chicken dinner uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Knights of Columbus. You are able to pick up tickets at the door as well. Uh, that um, My phone number, just in case anybody needs me, because I did forget last month, 908-347-4548. Please feel free to call me with any issues, ideas. I'm always there to try and help in any way I can. And that concludes my report, Council President. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hickey. Uh, Mr. Brooks. Thank you, Council President. Again, um, being new to the Council and getting the first opportunity, as uh, Ms. Hickey said down the end, to work in the first snowstorm, one thing that hasn't been mentioned, I haven't heard enough of it mentioned here, yes, our communities are absolutely great in terms of being able to, to help one another, assist one another, assist seniors, but what I haven't heard is that I had great information from members of this Council. Council people calling me and saying, you know, Mont, you know, take a look at this particular street and someone else giving me a call. So the council worked together as well. So it wasn't a surprise to me because I said it when I first got here and I'll, I'll continue to say it, that to my right and to my left are great people who work together. And um, it made my job a lot easier in terms of getting information from fellow council members as it relates to what was going on, even though they were not in my ward. And as I drove around, I was able to share that information. And again, it made it easier and I think better for every resident for the city of Linden. And also, um, seldom do I get a chance to talk about my phone number because Rashana kills me so much about it, but my phone number, is, in case you want to contact me, is 
908-406-8537. Again, that's 908-406-8537. And thank you to every council member here for the support that they've given me. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Uh, Mayor, before you give us your report, there was a chair that you made before. Can you repeat that? <laughs> it was rah, 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 sis, boom, ba. Hit him in the head with a stick. <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I have your report, that, please? That's an old Linden cheer. That's an old Linden cheer. It started right here in Linden. Good evening, everybody. I, I have some very good news tonight. Um, and it, it starts with the ISP property. As, as many of you know, there are plans to uh, build a warehousing facility uh, on the other side of the, of the turnpike here in Linden. Um, I'm uh, happy to announce that we've successfully completed the negotiations with regards to uh, constructing a bridge that leads into that property. Uh, that particular property, there was a train that blocks the entrance of that property and it, it, it comes through twice a day and it would stop traffic from being able to enter for upwards of 40 minutes. And that would be a detriment to anybody who wanted to develop that property. So what we did was, um, well, what ISP did was propose to build a bridge. Uh, and we had a few points uh, of contention, some things we didn't agree with with regards to the bridge, but we were able to uh, iron, out, iron out all our difficulties. And um, so um, again, I'm happy to, to announce that uh, we have completed our negotiations with regards to the bridge. Uh, and the next phase of the project can begin now. And, and that has to do with uh, something called surcharging. Uh, and ISP will begin the surcharging within, within six to eight months. And what surcharging simply means, as, as, as we talked about earlier this evening, the, um, the, the flood plains have been changed and redefined in Linden. So surcharging has to do with, uh, with, with increasing the elevation of the land, uh, and ISP will begin that again in six to eight months. Uh, the second thing I want to report on is the Capadaglia project on uh, Wood Avenue. Uh, uh, the, as you all know, the Capadaglia Meridia is building uh, 176 units uh, right next to um, the school number six on uh, Wood Avenue. Uh, they have been in negotiations with properties owners uh, across the street, and they've acquired all the properties but one. So uh, we're looking forward to them being able to acquire that next piece of property so, so they can begin phase two of their project. Um, the last thing I want to report on is the SID um, project that we're working on. We, as you all know, uh, last month I reported that we we're looking to expand our special improvement district to include um, the US-1 corridor. Uh, and we, we cited a few reasons. One was to maybe increase the police protection. Uh, but one of the main reasons that we'd like to do this is to um, it would give us an opportunity to market those areas a little bit better. Uh, and of, of course, the increased revenues would allow us to do upgrades uh, on, along the US-1 corridor. So um, we met with um, the city of Rollway, the mayor, Sam Steinman, and uh, we met with the BA, uh, and we discussed some of the pitfalls that they had in, in, in their creating of their new SID uh, district. So we're hoping to learn from their mistakes. Uh, we also went over to um, Carteret where we met with uh, the mayor, uh, Dan Ryman, uh, who has also created some special improvement districts in his town. And we think that um, uh, Dan is doing some very unique things uh, with regard to his, SID unit, his, his special improvement district. And Dan is also, Carteret's a town that's very similar to Linden where we ha have uh, residential and industry. Uh, and there's some very unique things that he's doing with the industry there that we think that we can bring to Linden. So we've invited uh, Mayor uh, Dan Ryman to our next council caucus meeting so that he can further enlighten the council as to some things that we can do uh, with regards to assessing um, properties differently that could bring relief to the residential uh, areas in town. Uh, that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to extend a little bit on the report that Mr. Sadowski gave about the engineering. Uh, FEMA is the one that decides which are the flood areas. It's not the city, it's not the state. And they decide this according to how much rain we are getting. And if you notice, we are getting more rain than we used to. 
and also they decide depending how high the waters rise. But the streets that Mr. Sadowski mentioned, you have to be aware that if there's a mortgage that's being paid here, the banks might be asking you for flood insurance where you didn't have to pay it before. So make sure that you check into this. The flood insurance is set by FEMA, not by us, and the banks go by that. Now, if your area, your building has never flooded, there's ways to go around that, something called a LOMA, it's a letter of map amendment. For that, you will have to call your own surveyor, your own engineer, and they will come in and do an investigation if you are above the floodplain. Okay, any questions, you can call again the engineering department here and they will be able to fill you in a little bit more. Uh, for my report, I tell you, we've been working very closely together. Uh, this whole council with the mayor, we have better communication, we work together, we are helping each other, and the, as you heard from the mayor today, the city is moving forward. We have a lot of ideas, a lot of things we're implementing, and things are getting done. So uh, I want to thank the mayor, I want to thank all this council for the past two months. And yes, it's a short period of time, but we are moving forward. Now we are going to go with resolutions 2015-90 through 2015-125. Public comments will be permitted for those specific resolutions to be removed from the consent approval. Please read the synopsis of the resolutions which have been prepared by the city's clerk's office. Each is informative and self-explanatory. However, if you wish to address a specific resolution, the council will entertain questions on it. Is there anybody that would like to speak on any of these resolutions? 96? 103? 104? 107? 111? 114. Uh, Ma'am? 113. Anybody on the left side? Me. You? Yeah, me. Which resolution? <clears throat> 111, please. 111. Okay. Um, Uh, can I have a motion for the remainder of the uh, resolutions, please? As the president, make a motion for approval of resolutions 90 to uh, 125, with exception of 96, 103, 104, 107, 111, 113, 114. That's for a second. Second. President, I have a motion. Who was the second? Oh, can I have a second? Who was? Councilman. Second. I second. Mr. Calvis? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes, with the exception of 93, 105, 106, and 123. 105, 106, and 123. Medichinko? Yes. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Stowski. <laughs> yes. Mr. Medichinko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes, on all abstain on 112. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Uh, Ms. Malik, want to come up, please? Uh, resolution 96. What exactly is being done by the Audubon Society for the $30,000? Okay, for the Audubon Society, we are under contract, which we did with the DEP for the closing of the um, landfill. And the certain steps that we have to take. Uh, this is just one of them. Uh, there's a lot more coming, and we are in a contract buying for about 20 years or so. 
with the Audubon Society is doing this? Or? Uh, the Audubon Society is part of it, which, uh, Michael, will you be able to? Yeah, yeah. Aud Audubon Society, basically, they do all the events at the Hawk Rides with the children, the schools, you know, the plantings. If you ever see, we announce these free things on Saturday. That's the Audubon Society. Or they're basically like the steward of the, of the Hawk Rise. And so we're funding this with the $30,000 for that activity? I believe so, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Malik, stay up here, please. Uh, 103. Okay. For 103 here, I see that for the landfill closure, it's $341,000, which is the cost. But I thought that the landfill was already capped, closed. I know we have ongoing expenditures for drainage, for recycling the water, but this seems pretty high for this year, for the, 200, the 2015 budget for $341,000, and they, talk, they call it landfill closure. So can I have a little bit more detail on this? Mr. Vercek, can you uh, give us an answer on this? Uh, these are all the activities that have to be done, like you said, for the uh, leachate, for the ACO compliance, things like that. Uh, we have another job. We have to locate a short in the uh, underground electric that goes into the leachate pump uh, system. So it's, it's combined all the contracts into one. So it's not a closure. It's not capping. It's all the ancillary work that's being done. Yeah, it's post-closure, actually. Oh, okay. And then also on that, the wetlands enhancement. I know that there's um, an ordinance on the first reading, but what is some of this wetlands enhancement? I know someone had said that there was going to be putting like a canoe launch and other things. Uh, Ma'am, you have to uh, stick with the resolutions right now. That is. It's project, the wetlands enhancement, and the costs. So I'm asking. Which resolution I, is this? Uh, 103. It says project wetlands enhancement. $1.1 million. Okay. Since I asked a question about landfill closure. Yes. Yeah. George, is this the uh, airport? She mentioned no, about eight years ago, uh, we had to en uh, enhance some wetlands at the uh, wetlands because we improved the airport. So we entered into a uh, ACO with DEP and they gave us 10 years to create wetlands somewhere in Linden. Uh, we dragged our feet because we didn't have the money. Now we only have a year and a half left to do that. So we're going to, or we're hoping to get a grant where some uh, operating engineers will go out there and uh, start digging up the silt, dig up the old wetlands, and the DEP is making us put enhanced wetlands. So it's about 10, 12 acres that we have to do. Right, okay, so that's just fine, that's good enough. Uh, 104, Mrs. Malik. Okay, um, typically when people have had tanks removed, they've paid for all the analysis and whatnot. So what I'd like to know for these two locations on Park Avenue and on Knopf Street, is this public or private? locations uh, George it's public it's the old juvenile building there was a 500 gallon underground tank and unfortunately it was leaking so this is to pay for the wells we have to put in to check out the groundwater and the uh, soil to see how badly contaminated it is and what street was that on is that on Parker no that's on Knopf only. Knopf. and what's on Park it was the old Park plastics but that job has been shelved Okay, so they're not doing any investigation, so we're not paying. So the um, $103,000 is just for the Knopf Street? No, it's 38000 uh, A real general expenditure. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, 107, ma'am. For this, uh, what is this program uh, for a backflow program uh, of Alpha Dog Solutions? Can someone explain what this is? Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Sack? Yes, this program is going to be a customized program specifically designed for the construction code department for the city of Linden to track black flow preventers. This was something that the construction code department had been tasked with since 2009. Um, we had a variety of software applications for less than $500, but they kept changing the um, 
manpower changed, so they were never really able to get the program up and running fully. <coughs> Once it's up and running fully, it's going to bring in a close to $40,000 annually. So we'll recoup this money within a one-year period. It's going to be budgeted out of the construction code department because the construction code department is a self-sustaining department. The revenues that are brought in offset the expenses in that department. So it's a and profit the, center, you're saying? Yes. Okay. And the technology committee and the finance committee um, had met with the vendor, Alpha Dog, and he's quite excited to start this project. Um, again, it's going to be very labor intensive in the beginning um, because he is customizing this to us. The forms, the um, uh, quarterly reports, everything that needs to be done is going to be a very comprehensive program. But once it's operational, we'll be recuperating that money on an annual basis and it'll be a reoccurring revenue to the city. So we're recouping, but what's the recurring? I mean, where are we? Are we do? First There's off, the over 660 backflow preventers throughout the city of Linden. Is this like where on our sewer uh, sewer systems, or where is this backflow? I believe maybe the Board of Health might be able to help me out and explain. Uh, well, back, so back, the backflow is really uh, manpower backflow. Is that what you're saying? That is okay. Fine. Good enough. And and so, but the last thing is why I said a profit center. So, in recouping this, so they're recouping it because there's going to be less expenditure for maintenance and whatnot. How are we recouping this and there's making a, the money? I believe there's a uh, ordinance that sets up an annual. The businesses are responsible to submit an annual certification, and there's a dollar amount associated with that. That's where the annual revenue will come from. So we're going to get it from our businesses here in the city. Yes. Good. Okay. Okay, Mrs. Mel, let's jump to 114. Uh, 114 or 111? 114. Let's get 111 right now. Sure. Okay. Uh, what is this facility? Uh, facility dude for. Um, explain what this is. Yeah. Yeah. Facility dude, to my delight, is actually a web based program that is going to allow us to track all of the calls that come in will no longer have a form or a work order they're going to be typed right into the web application calls coming into where dispatch Dis oh. dpw okay um it's specific for dpw it's facility dude it's an awesome program we actually had uh, a webinar of sorts with the director with the treasury department and technology and because I am on the DPW committee, I've been asking for quite a while now, we should be able to have our dispatchers who are answering the phone do something in the computer so that this, the information is automated. So this paper doesn't get lost or somebody forgot to write it here. This program actually will allow us to do reports. It'll allow us to see how long an issue was open. It'll allow us to communicate directly with the residents upon the closure of a ticket it's going to allow every council member here to actually initiate a ticket so when you hear the council members on the other end of the dais talk about potholes they can go in and they can create an issue and the management will assign it that way to their team or whatever it is it's awesome it's very inexpensive so it's more efficiency based is there any cost savings like in terms of manpower having less people for dispatch we would we would definitely need less people and we would have to have less paper. So while we're saving trees, we're also saving money. So have we instituted something about you know saving the the, the personnel? Is something being done to take that you know, to do something with that head counter? No. A lot of the people who are actually answering the phones um, are answering the phones for a, a various number of reasons. So they are technically doing this job as opposed to doing something else. So they'll go back and do something else. Okay, so it's definitely efficiency and getting you know, bigger bang for the buck, so to speak. Absolutely. Okay. And this can actually be cross-utilized if we were so inclined. So I'm definitely going to be looking to use this. So when a resident calls me and says this is an issue here, I'll just automatically go in and, and send it. So then I know it's there. I can track it from Good. point A to point B and then respond immediately. So I'm excited about it. And we, we try to encourage the facility dudes to give us a certain number of years guarantee with no increase. So he was, you know, 
positive that once we're in, our fees won't increase at all. So this is just an initiation fee or? No, that's the whole fee, including training. The, the training, so this is for the, the web-based program and is this gonna be on, so the, the, this is the $20,000 or $22,000 for this year? That's it. That's it, that's but it. then for future years, there's not gonna be anything else? It's not gonna be any more. It's, we have maintenance included, is it called maintenance? What do they call it, Alexis? Training? Um, yeah, we for this year, this is the total expenses mm -hmm. with the extra additional training that we had discussed right. at the technology meeting. But what um, the councilwoman's referring to is that she wanted to make sure that um, when we entered into this contract that we are going to be able to budget the same amount next year and for the next three years that that number is not going to increase for our participation, which is $9,850. And this company has guaranteed that that rate will stay in effect for the next three day, three years for okay, that so, maintenance. So how come the $9,000 is not mentioned? So the 22000 this year. That's this just, is the startup. This is the startup. That includes like the 9000 you might Correct. say. And then next year it's going to be like 9000 9000 9000 going on. Only. Only. And exactly. we, we don't have to buy software. That's the beauty of it. Right. And that's why it's a lower cost, like mm -hmm. less than half of that. Okay. And we get the automatic enhancements to the program Good. as well. And is there like a help desk that comes along with that, you said? Yes. Good. Okay. Nice. I'm excited. Um, okay. Uh, hold on a minute, please. Can I have a motion on resolutions 96, 103, 104, 107, and 114, please? Council President, make a motion for the passage of resolutions 96, 103, 104, 107, and... 114 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Calvis. Yes. Brown. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Minichinko. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Yes. Resolution 111. This is Malik. for the appointment for Daniel Antonelli at um, 77,000 and, and change. Is this the prorated from what the rate that Mr. Hudek was getting or is what type of an adjustment has there been? Uh, Mrs. Sack? This is the salary that Mr. Hudak um, was earning as the municipal attorney and the okay. council had decided to put Mr. Antonelli at that salary. Okay, well he's doing the same job, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Cosby, you had a comment? Yes, I did have a comment, and I, I failed at the personnel report for the retirement. Well, he's not retiring, but for the resignation of our former city attorney, I just wanted to wish Judge Hudak the very best in Superior Court and hope that I will, I will never go in front of him because they would <laughs> send me someplace else. But for those who do go in front of him, be mindful that he is uh, a true man of the law, and you will not understand a word he's saying because he's going to talk to you like a lawyer, but he will be missed. And Mr. Antonelli, you got some big shoes to fill, brother, and we're going to work you. So, but thank you and welcome. Can I have a resolution for 2015-111, please? for passage of uh, resolution 2015-111, ask for a second. Second. Mr. Kalbus. Yes. Brown. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Medichinko. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Yes. Uh, resolution 113. Ma'am, can you please come up? I came up because I wanted to thank all of you because you settled on making a resolution in favor of the city. And I think that that's a great idea. You have to also, I just found out recently that they're going to try to pass a bill getting rid of the right of eminent domain in our favor, make, making it easier for people to take our land away from us. So you're going to have to battle that, yeah. I hope. And so thank you very much. If I, I try to get in touch with everybody and send you some things over the email, but I know I was missing some people, and I 
because the thing came back saying not deliverable. Uh, can I take the time to also make a comment on um, 103? Because I didn't know what, was, what that, that was about. And the fact that um, the mayor of Carteret uh, and the mayor of our city will be getting together. Uh, they have an environmental project there called Soil Safe. Soil Safe is, I hate to say this, but it's politically involved. And it's very difficult, but there are people fighting this. The DEP had reports that it was not a very good idea, you know, that Staten Island is against it because they're afraid that it, the um, contaminated soil on the other side of the Rollway River in Carteret will be under a lot of pressure and will be seeping out into the Rollway River, going into the bay where they have clamming and fishing. So that's not a done deal exactly yet. But the more you try to put on a wetlands, the more impermeable, impermeable you make the soil, the more flooding you're going to have upstream because this, the water will not be able to soak into a wetland if there isn't a wetland left. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, I was and just told that last year we passed a resolution against that. Well, I don't know what the mayor of Carteret is going to come in and talk about, but we shouldn't be pelling, we shouldn't be making any. No, no, the mayor of Carteret is just coming in to just to talk and chat and gives us ideas. That's okay. all. So you know that. Um, so you've made a resolution against soil safe. Well, last year. Well, last year, missed that. Yeah. But we're still fighting it. It's the arc, the Rollway yes. Arc. We did, the we Rollway did Arch. That. We opposed that last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thank you very Good much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your resolution. Thank you. Can I have a motion for 113, please? Council President, make a motion for passage of resolution 113. Ask for a second. Second. Mr. Kalbus. Yes. Brown. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Mitichinko. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Yes. Uh, we have resolution 126 that will be read by Mr. Bodek. Sir. City of Linden resolution to amend the current fund temporary operating budget for the period of January 1, 2015 through March 31st, 2015. Whereas NJSA 40A colon 4-19 provides that where any contract commitment or payments are made prior to the final adoption of the 2015 current operating budget, temporary appropriation should be made for the purpose and amounts required in the manner and time therein provided. And whereas the total temporary appropriations in the 2015 current operating budget is the sum of $22,446,880.69, cents, and whereas it is necessary to make adjustments to the temporary budget resolution, which was adopted on January 7, 2015, to be amended to the following. Snow removal, salary and wages, add $40,000. Snow removal, other expenses, add $10,000. Social Security system, other expenses, subtract $50,000. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following temporary appropriations be adjusted for current fund and that a certified copy of this resolution be transmitted to the chief financial officer for her records. Any questions from the public? Comments. Any comments? Ms. Cosby? Yes. So everyone heard the numbers and the reason for this, it says no removal. Uh, we are going to investigate the reason for the, the elevated amount in this. Seems a little excessive, and while we want to make sure our streets are safe and clean, there's an issue with uh, the excessive amount that was given in overtime. So I just wanted to let everybody know that, I mean, we're taking money from one account to another account, and we're on a temporary budget. So we're going to meet with the department manager, Treasury, and myself, and we are actually, for the council president, going to investigate. Because I know that in our town, you know, we have less employees than we used to have, but we have a lot of employees who are highly paid. And I know I'm going to make a few enemies here, but a lot of folks who are earning overtime are earning at an astronomical rate. 
So we need to find out where this money went uh, when we didn't really have that much snow. So I just wanted to put that out there so everybody was clear on why we're doing this. That's it. Can I have a motion for 126, please? Council President, make a motion for the passage of ordinance 2015-126, and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Caldas. Yes. Brown. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Cosby Harling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Minichinko. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Yes. Uh, this time before we go to uh, One twenty six. Yes. Yes, please come up. Rang on, rang a bell. Uh, when I look at this here, it says snow removal, the forty thousand, the ten thousand. But this last line item, social security systems, other expenses, fifty thousand dollars. So I must be brain dead right now. But um, social security for um, uh, $50,000 for these other items of 40 and 10. Somehow it doesn't make sense. Mrs. Sack? Yes, we're running on a temporary budget. The temporary budget was adopted last month and the only place that we can take from would be Social Security. That's where we're allowed to transfer the appropriation. Um, the reason why we have funds in that Social Security line item, we did not hire like we anticipated to hire at the end of December, beginning of January. So, so that 50,000 is gonna be moved into the snow overtime because right. it's a temporary appropriation. So it's not social security of some sort, it's gotcha. No, 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 it's just taking it from one line item into the where we need it. Yeah, basically, thank you. Uh, before we go into uh, ordinance first readings, I would like to congratulate uh, Judge John Hudak He's been with the city many years, and he was just recently appointed to Superior Court. Filling his spot, I would like to congratulate uh, Dan Antonelli, who, as Ms. Cosby said, uh, has some big shoes to fill. Congratulations, Danny. And of course, taking Danny's position is Mohamed Jallo. He's um, a lawyer here, has been helping us with different cases the public defendant, Impressive. and he is in municipal court. So uh, I can say welcome because it's been with us. So I just want to say congratulations. Now for uh, first readings on ordinances number 59-5. Bond ordinance authorizing the removal of underground storage tanks and remediation at sites at various locations for the engineering department, appropriating $110,000 therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $104,500 and bonds or notes to finance part of the cost. Thank you. Uh, ordinance 59-6. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can I have a motion to introduce the ordinance, please? Any comment? No comments. Can I have a motion to introduce the ordinance, please? Uh, like for the passage of bond ordinance 59-05 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Minuchenko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ordinance 59-6? Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $176,000 for the acquisition of sports utility vehicles for the police department and authorizing the issuance of $167,200 in bonds or notes to finance part of the cost. May I have a motion to introduce the ordinance, please? I prefer to make a motion for introduction of ordinance 59-06 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Minerchenko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Uh, ordinance 59-7. Bond ordinance authorizing the resurfacing of various streets in the city of Linden, appropriating $2,310,000, and authorizing the issuance of 
$2,194,500 in bonds or notes to finance part of the cost. May I have a motion to introduce the ordinance, please? Council President, make a motion for introduction of Ordinance 59-07, ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Minerchenko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ordinance 59-8. Bond Ordinance amending Bond Ordinance number 5512, finally adopted by the City of Council, City of Linden, on March 15, 2011, relative to the closure of Linden Landfill. May I have a motion to introduce the ordinance? Yes, Mr. President. I ask for introduction of Ordinance 59-08 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Minerchenko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ordinance 59-9? An ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled, an ordinance establishing a schedule of titles, salary ranges, and regulations for maintaining the classification and salary standardization plan of all employees of the City of Linden, passed August 15, 1995, and approved August 16, 1995. Add schedule for JJ3. May I have a motion to introduce the ordinance, please? Mr. President, I'd like to introduce ordinance 5909 and seek a second. Second. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Minerchenko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ordinance 59-10? Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $1,100,000 for wetland remediation for the landfill and airport and authorizing the issuance of $1,045,000 in bonds or notes to finance part of the cost. May I have a motion to introduce the ordinance, please? She has a question. Uh, no, no comments. Not on uh, first readings. She can make, she can make yes. comments. No yes. questions. Can I have a motion to introduce the ordinance, please? Council President, to make a motion for introduction of Ordinance 59 dash. 10 and ask for a second. Second. Mr. Colibus? Yes. Brown? Yes. Co Brooks? Yes. Cosby Hurling? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Minerchenko? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Medina? Yes. Hickey? Mr. Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Comments from members of the public in attendance on city business only. No personal, political, or derogatory comments. You will have five minutes. Is there anyone who did not get a chance to sign the list? It's okay, I got you. Anybody else? Mrs. Ms. Mala, can you please come up? You're adding your name, huh? <laughs> no, no, something personal. I okay. just want to remind you, uh, any comments, any questions are directed to me, and sure. uh, I will pass them on to whoever is able to answer them. Okay? Very good. Thank you. Uh, last month, there was a resolution that announced our, a new judge and a new assistant judge, and I've raised these issue, an issue before that sometimes resolutions are not really complete. And I had nudged uh, someone that was sitting next to me saying, oh, we're getting you know, three judges instead of two. I was, kind of, I was quite taken back that Dan Roberts, it wasn't announced that he was let go. So I think that was rather remiss of not bringing that in the resolution. But the question that I have is, you know, Dan Roberts, I've only heard nothing but good points about him, the work that he's done, the efficiency that he's improved. So even though, this is kind of like a rhetorical question, even though the mayor has the right to choose another mayor, uh, you know, choose the judges, but I'm kind of surprised and I'd like to get some input, like why was he removed and, you know, having another individual. The assistant judge, I think it's the same person that we had, just the main judge is someone that's new. The other thing is, from what I understand, that this new judge is not a Linden resident, and I know, Mayor, that you are talking about like 
um, Linden residents coming first or Linden comes first. So I'm kind of taken back that this new judge is not a Linden resident, and I'm not quite sure if she has a business in Linden. Uh, first, I want to say Daniel Roberts is not only uh, was a great judge. Right. I was glad I didn't have to go in front of him. Uh, very nice person and a great soccer coach. I know Danny many years. Okay. Uh, according to our system of government, it is the mayor who decides who he's going to appoint, as you mentioned. Uh, the assistant judge was the one who got moved up to be the first judge. Mm -hmm. And is the new assistant the one that was brought in. She's highly qualified. But is, is that... Uh, uh, she, is she she's the from, one that's not from Linden. Right, okay. okay. She's highly qualified. Right. Uh, we gave her um, a quick interview in the council, and we, we all agree she's lovely lady. Both ladies are lovely ladies, mm -hmm. and they're very, they have a very big resume. According to the reasons uh, for that, I can have the mayor answer you if you're interested, but at the end of the day is his, his appointment, and um, we always make sure as the council that the people that get appointed are qualified, and both of these ladies are. Right, but do you always have to discharge your responsibilities, you know, just because you're in a new position to actually say, well, I want to have persons A and B instead of, you know, C and D? And that's just, you know, a question that if he did a good job, and I can remember when Judge DeLeo was in office, you know, everyone was saying, well, you know, why fix something if it's not broke? So, you know, he's in the system, why discharge him of his services? So I'm just bringing up that same question, you know, here now. Well, at the end of the day, ma'am, I, I do agree with you in some points. Uh, Business-wise, on the outside, when you have new management come in, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the times they get rid of uh, the uh, middle Deadwood. management. Okay. But at the end of the day is, is the mayor's appointment. Okay. Uh, mayor, would you like to make any comments? No, I, I, I concur. At the end of the day, it is my appointment. And um, any municipal judge, uh, they know when they take the position that they are at the, um, at the mayor's um, disposal. I mean, when Dan Roberts took the position, he knew very well that, um, and he admitted it himself, he says, when if, if America Bunker is no longer the mayor, he understood that he ran the risk of not being appointed again. And um, uh, regardless of the job that he do, he's done, I, I thought that the uh, two appointments that I made would do an, an outstanding job here in Linden, uh, and I think they're going to do a very good job as they have already begun. Right, and even though one is not a Linden resident, no, and, and that has nothing to do, do with it, ma'am. No, okay. in, in, all, in okay. most cases, in most cases, you, in, in, in almost every town, the municipal judges are not the residents; they don't, they don't live in town. Right. Uh, in in okay. fact, we have an exception to the rule here with Cassandra Corbin McGee. Uh, I think she's one of the only judges in, in Union County who lives in the town that she presides in. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and in fact, most judges prefer uh, to be in a different town right. uh, because they're presiding over people who have been, been involved in the, and some, sometimes nefarious activities, and it's in their best interest sometimes not gotcha. even to be in their town. Right. Um, the second point is, and this, well, eventually I think for our police chief, but as you say, I'll direct it to you that what's the basis for assigning cars for our mayor? Um, I know that someone had called me on this, that initially a car, like a nice SUV was appointed for the mayor, and then now it was reduced to some, back to the original mayor's car. So what I'd like to know is what's the basis for assigning a vehicle, and this is just for you know, city business, not for fancy transportation. So I'd like to have some comment on that. He's uh, driving the Crown Victoria, uh, the, 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 the car. Right, and, but initially uh, it was uses, something else. He uses for city business, right? And sometimes, obviously, city business takes him away from the city, Trenton right. and other places. But that's basically what his car is for. Right, and that he's going to stick with that Crown Victoria. It's not going to be upgraded, because I know initially he was driving something else, and then. So I mean, that's fine. Okay, because I we, I don't have that much time. I'd, I'd like to I'd like to respond to that. Uh, sure. As for as long as I can remember, I, I remember mayors who drove. Cadillacs. Brand new Cadillacs. Yep. Um, the, the, the fact of the matter is the Crown Victoria is, is a, is a, doesn't handle very well in, in bad weather. And mm -hmm. uh, I opted for a, something with a four-wheel drive. And at the time, I told the chief I did, did not want a new vehicle. The chief offered me a new vehicle. I opted for an older SUV. Mm -hmm. um, 
Now, unfortunately, the SUV that was awarded to me was one that was purchased with Homeland Security money, so I had to give it back. The chief did find another SUV, but I, but I went back. I said, you know what? I'll, I'll try the Crown Vic. It's, I, I thought it was more reflective of a, of a person who's uh, the head of the police department. So we'll we'll go with the Crown Vic for now. But you save money, right? But let me let me tell you this: if the chief uh, should come across another car that uh, he feels uh, that I am allowed to drive and I feel that it's uh, more you know better for me than a Crown Vic I will certainly won't I won't hesitate to ask the chief if I could have that car because uh, as the chief knows I am technically the head of the police department um, and the chief has of, often said that if there's an emergency mayor I want you to be able to get to the location he says I don't want you to have to be stuck in the snow if I need you I want you to be able to get here well, there so, has to be prudence in what's being used for cars. Okay, fine, very good, thank you. Uh, the last question that I had, or last issue, is um, can I just get a heads up? You know, we were talking about a city administrator. What kind of time frame? Um, are we definitely going to be getting a, a city administrator at some time? And yes, we are. We have, uh, I guess you can call him a headhunter, somebody, and I believe he's ready to put in um, an ad out there and he's so, calling his contacts and putting it together so maybe like in the next six months we could anticipate or something less like that. than six months i will say right so with that in mind what i the question that i have is and some actually calls have come in to me on this is that um this is for you know i'd like to address it really to the mayor is you have a uh, a county job and you also now have a city job and I know that the city job is considered part-time, but I was talking you know, many times to Mayor Gabanka, and he's putting in his 40 hours a week. So the question I have is, isn't there some sort of a, a conflict here that the city job is a full-time job, and I don't know if the county is 37 and a half hours or 40 hours, but how do you intend to really do the mayor mayoral position when you have a, a county position that's full-time? There, there are a number of mayors throughout the, yeah, throughout the county and throughout the state who work two jobs. Uh, when the day comes that I can, cannot perform my duties effectively as a mayor, then we will address it. But as, as it stands right now, I seem to be performing the duties as a mayor very effectively, uh, and I think that my county job, I'm performing that effectively. Um, uh, I don't think it should be a question uh, you know, for you or anybody else as long as I can do my job as the mayor. But don't you have to be accountable, like put in 40 hours a week at your county uh, job? Excuse me, uh, time is up. But just to close that with is, like the mayor said, he's doing his job effectively right now. If there were a problem arises, we will take it upon them. Right but, now, he's doing his job effectively. All right, well, he's doing a job, but then accountable time. I mean, that has a lot of merit to say that the amount of time that you're actually putting into your positions. Well, uh, what you should do, uh, you, uh, Mayor, you, that's no, it. Let, let me ask this, no. You should be in my house at four o'clock in the morning when the phone rings, when mm -hmm. there's a fire, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we work 24 hours a day as mayors, okay? Whenever there's a problem, we're, we're on call, okay? Um, the, the notion of, of whether I'm putting 40 hours in as a mayor it's, it's, or 40 hours in at my other job, it doesn't make a difference. First of all, the mayor's job in Linda is considered part-time. Okay, but I'm working it full time regardless. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time at this. Okay, uh, if, if, and again, if that time should arise where I can't perform my job effectively, that's when you come to the mic and say, Mr. Count Mayor Armstead, you're not doing your job of performing your duties effectively. Okay, and furthermore, mm -hmm. okay, I don't think it's any of your business. Very good. Thank okay, you. that's it. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Sylvia, Sylvia Weisbrook? Ah, okay, thank you. You're done, thank you. And Ms. Uh, Judy Miller. You see, I remember your name. Good evening, I just wanted to make a comment um, about the snow removal. So far in my ward, in the 10th ward, it's been very good, really very good, especially today. They went in and out with the little pickup truck. In fact, it was number 14, okay? They went right to the curb. My problem is not with public works. It's with the people that when we say remove your car from the street, 
It doesn't mean when your neighbor removes their car, you come out and take your car and put it in front of their house. It also doesn't mean when the garage doors open up and the snowblower comes out, do not blow it in the street. The plows go by, the snowblowers come out, and the street is a mess again. Now you have cars being stuck. We're not supposed to pile it in the street also. I don't know why the street has become a dumping ground for everything. If you put mounds of snow in the street and the plow comes by, it's going in the next person's driveway. We're not supposed to put it in the street, are we? No. You can get a summons for that, right? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, let me look into yes. Yes. Okay, that's fine. And with the snowblower also, you're supposed to aim it at your property, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. But so far, so good. Okay, great. Okay. I'll, Thank tell, you. I'll pass it over to DPW. Uh, thank you. The following council meetings will be as follows. Council conference meeting, Monday, March 16th, 2015 at 6 p.m. in the council conference room, City Hall 301 Northwood Avenue. Council conference meeting prior to the council meeting, Tuesday, March 17th, 2015 at 6 p.m. in the council conference room, City Hall 301 Northwood Avenue. Council meeting, Tuesday, March 17th, 2015 at 7 p.m. in the council chamber, City Hall 301 Northwood Avenue. Everybody have a happy Mardi Gras, whatever's left over and uh, let's be very careful with the snow. I need uh, a motion for adjournment. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Caldas. Yes. Brown. No. Brooks. Yes. Cosby Erling. Yes. Sadowski. Yes. Medichinko. Yes. Yamakaitis. Yes. Medina. Yes. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Everybody have a good night, and remember, be careful out there with the snow. It's very cold. <laughs>